Please excuse me if I seem a little off today, as I have worked 11 hours, I saw a body, and I have a lot of albums to talk about until I have to go work another 11 hours in the morning. So it's been about two weeks since Def Leppard dropped their new album, Diamond Star Halos, and I consider myself a decent enough fan. I mean, I don't know every single song, but I know at least half of them. They got a lot of albums we got to talk about. Some fantastic, some really, really bad, but honestly, they're still one of my favorite bands. And although I have indeed done, I'd say, all of my true favorite bands, they're at least the next step before that where I still really, really like them, but only like half the discography. For the most part, usually there's at least one song on every album that I really like. Usually. But, you know... Without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, before the actual list, I just wanted to bring up a couple albums that I'm not including on the list, but I thought I'd mention them anyway, starting with Retroactive. This is just a collection of B-sides, and for the longest time, I had no idea. I just thought it was a normal album. But no, it's just just a bunch of B-sides. The Ride Into the Sun re-recording with that piano intro absolutely kicks ass. Two Steps Behind, I don't even remember the electric version. It's all about the acoustic, I think, which I'm pretty sure shows up on whatever album it's on. I barely even remember any songs from this one, but that's okay because, like I said, they're just B-sides. Um, the cover album, yeah, I do not own anymore, and I don't consider cover albums studio albums, even though they obviously they did film it, record it in the studio, but they're, it's not their song, so... I'm not going to worry about it. Um, Mirrorball, the live album from 2011. It's just a live album, but it does close with three new studio tracks. Undefeated, absolutely kicks ass. I love that song. And the other two songs, I could frankly never hear again and I'd be fine. Um, but yeah, with all that son, out of the way, let's get started with number 11. Okay, so you know when I said most of these albums have at least one song I really like? Because X is absolutely miserable to sit through. Not only is it easily the worst Def Leppard album, it's actually within probably my 10 least favorite albums ever. I couldn't even sit through this album without skipping most of these songs because they're all the same tempo they all sound the exact same and th there's just nothing there's nothing to this album that's even remotely interesting i mean hell even the band themselves have pretty much never touched this album live until very very recently when they started including i think now into their acoustic medley that's it that's it they never ever touch this album live i mean maybe when it like the first couple months but since then they never play anything on it because it's fucking terrible i'm sorry it's a horrible terrible album and the worst part about it is is it's actually the only album where rick allen my boy rick allen over here actually co-wrote almost all the songs so i don't know if it was his fault i don't know I don't know, but whoever it was, whoever it was, whoever was the main influence behind X really dropped the ball. I'm sorry. I need to move on because I, the only reason I still even own it is because I'd get like 20 cents for it if I sold it. So it's like, I might as well keep it and say I own all the albums, but I will never listen to this album again. Christ, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even look at my notes while talking about X just because I knew I hated that album so much. And really, all I had to say else was Four Letter Word was the only 
decently tolerable thing on there. But even still, I'll never listen to that song again, frankly. Uh, but anyway, goodness gracious, uh, Slang is up next. So, I think Turn to Dust is pretty decent. I really like, there's a lot of instruments going on on that song. The title track is really different, but really cool at the same time. I really like the solo in All I Want. And then there's that whole middle section of this album that's just totally forgettable. And then it hits you with Gift of Flesh, which is actually a super rockin' song and easily the best song on this album. But then it goes back to being boring again. Like, it's not nearly as bad as X, but it's just not great. I would say these two are the only bad Def Leppard albums. Um, from here on out, they're either decent or f phenomenal. Um, but yeah, even... I, <laughs> I don't even have the thing, like... It's just a broken piece, because I just, like, I don't care. I don't care about slang. Who the hell cares about slang out there? I'm just kidding. I know I know. there's a couple of people out there who like this album. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. It's not a bomb, an abomination, but goodness gracious. Uh, it's another pretty hard skip for me. All right, now we kick into Euphoria. All three of these albums were on the same shelf. Funny how that works. Yeah, like... Jeez, like the 90s, the late 90s were really rough for Def Leppard, not gonna lie. But Euphoria is pretty significantly stronger than either of those two albums. I mean, I could live without All Night easily. Don't have to hear that song again. Uh, Paper Sun is my favorite song on this album. You know, it's just like your classic Def Leppard, that song. Um, you know, and it just overall... It has the same kind of vibes as those, you know, good old days of Def Leppard. But unfortunately, it is just a little past their prime. And without Steve Clark around to help write songs, it definitely shows. But I know there's... Sometimes I get people who, like, haven't even listened to the band that I'm talking about. And they always like, oh, well, I'll listen to the uh, band you know, with your suggestions. I would definitely say you can start with Euphoria or the first album, whichever one. But if you want to listen to an order, I would say you can easily bypass the other two. Slang, only if you're super curious. But X, don't bother. If you ever see it, smash it. Smash it with a hammer. Smash it until every, like, little piece is invisible. Hopefully you know where that's from. Alright, now we have 2015's self-titled album. So when this album came out, they were actually selling it with this like super, they call it the fan pack. Um, just a bunch of stuff in here. There's like a keychain, which I lost one of the, <laughs> the picks on it. Which sucks, but like it's a whole, you know, whole ass magazine that has like a bio of every member. It goes through this album track by track and it goes through like, you know, their entire history. Every album has its own like page and everything. And even the one with X, it like they knew it was bad. Like it closes with. All these years later, X remains something of a Marmite release, with views on either side deeply entrenched. Whatever your opinion of it, to pass opinion without acknowledging the valor and courage of its creators would be pretty darn stupid. That's like, you know, when Nintendo Power would uh, say, like, that distinctive LJ on timer, because, like, they knew it was shit. Like, they know X is bad, but, like, it's an official magazine, so they can't just outright say it sucks. It's like, yeah, well, you may not like it, but, um, you know, you have to admire what they were going for with this album. It's like, no, no, I don't. I don't have to admire shit because it's a horrible album. I'm sorry. I, I got to stop talking about X. Point is, I was very hyped for this album that I got like this huge ass fan pack. 
Um, it has a couple bonus tracks, which are just alternate versions of songs. But anyway, Let's Go, I think, is a pretty decent intro, I suppose. Um, even though it's just super kind of generic. Let's be real. Dangerous is fine, but oh my god, this has two of their best songs. I don't give a shit. We have Man Enough, which has the funkiest, one of the funkiest bass grooves I ever heard in my life. And despite the fact that it has one of the dumbest like uh, vocal um, lyrics I've ever heard, are you man enough to be my girl? It's like, what the hell are you? I can't, I can't even with that lyric, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't care because the bass, the bass in that song is so damn good. And then the other one, all time high. I mean, that is like their ultimate feel good song. Like, you know, we're, we're up there in age, but we can still rock your ass pretty hard. And some, some of you might be like, nope, nope, after Adrenalize, it went Bzzz. And to a certain extent, I kind of agree, but they they do have a couple songs here and there, like All Time High and Man Enough, that just, just really get me going. And then we have, we close with Blind Faith, which, which is a much more epic song, you know, kind of like, you got like the Gods of War, and... Um, Die Hard the Hunter, you know, one of those where it's like a longer piece and not meant for like commercial, really. But then we have Sea of Love is kind of nice. Um, Energized is super ironic because for a song called Energized, it sure drags a whole lot. And Forever Young has some pretty cool riffs, but I think, yeah, it's all about uh, All Time High, Man Enough, and Blind Faith. You know, it, it builds really nicely in that song. You know, it has great melodies. The lyrics are really good. And big finale, all that jazz. It's just a really good song. It's a really good closer to the album. Um, so yeah, it's soup, some super highs on this album. But um, just also a lot of okay stuff. <laughs> Okay, then we have our brand new one with Diamond Star Halos. And this is exactly where I wanted it to land. I knew it wasn't going to crack like the top five. It, it wasn't going to compare to their old stuff. But if it could just be at least better than the most of like the last half of the discography, I'll be happy. And I'm very happy to say that I'm happy. But yeah, take what you want, kick, um, you rock me, goodbye for good this time, give me kiss that rocks, angels that can't help you now. Those are all pretty, pretty solid songs. But dude, I'm sorry, man. But the more I heard this, the more I just can't help but think that f the closer from here to eternity is just absolutely one of the five best songs they ever wrote. I I will die. I will die by that opinion. From Here to Eternity is one of their best songs. And I don't want to hear none of but I don't want to hear nobody talking about, you know, the band I I left after Pete Willis left. Well, that's great for you. But I'm sorry, but you are missing some pretty solid shit. I don't, there's one of you. One of you is in the comments of uh, my review of this one. Also, speaking of, uh, thanks if you uh, check that out, video out because my album, single album reviews, don't usually do like super well. But the one for this is, is a decent amount of traction. So if you're here from this video, thanks. Thanks for sticking around. And. I don't remember your name, but, you know, the guy who was talking, like, has, like, a very extensive comment on uh, this video saying how From Here to Eternity is super weak. Hell no, bro. Absolutely hell no. Rick Savage wrote that song, 
And my man, I'm sorry if I ever doubted you, but you can write some kick-ass songs. Goodness, I gotta move on. Um, you know, a few okay songs, a few meh, and a few pretty good songs. This is pretty standard for Def Leppard. It certainly doesn't reach the heights as a self-titled, minus From Here to Eternity, but I think it's certainly better overall. All right, so Adrenalize, our final album with Steve Clark on it. And it's a decent way to go out. You know, the three singles all slay. Let's Get Rocked. I am a firm believer that that is the, the cheesiest song in rock and roll. I mean, you got lyrics like, Take out the trash, tidy your room, sorry dad gotta disappear, let's get the rock out of here. They dropped a line. Let's get the rock out of here. And it's all about just, oh my god, I swear to god, there, there's just nothing as cheesy as let's get rocked. Um, but make love like a man <laughs> is absolutely a good time. And then have you ever needed someone so bad? It's just uh, just a really good song and a pretty fitting tribute. Although um, I know White Lightning was the tribute to Steve Clark, but I feel like Have You Ever Need Someone So Bad is an even better one. But other than those three, uh, Tear It Down, I think, uh, closes the album. And that one is a very, very solid song. But yeah, it's... The rest of the songs, it's pretty... Like, the okay... Def Leppard material um, with like Tonight Heaven Is and like Personal Property it has like a fun chorus and everything but um, you know kind of like some songs on Hysteria I mean they're good songs in their own right but like compared to the other ones they definitely just have some better stuff okay top 5 time Probably a very controversial opinion, putting songs from the Sparkle Lounge above Adrenalize, but I'm sorry, man, This it's just a really solid album. I'm pretty sure it's their shortest album, but what you get is just a more compacted collection of songs that are just really good. Go is easily their heaviest song they've ever written. I mean, just that that guitar riff, especially in like the solo where it's like, dun, 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 dun. it's like it's super simple, and in in like other bands it would be very tame. But for Def Leppard, the tone and riffs in Go are way heavier than they should be. And yeah, absolutely, that's my favorite song of the album. I think um, Nine Lives and Come On Come On are catchy as hell. Nine Lives has some country asshole that I don't give a shit about, but like. After him, catchy ass song. Come on, come on. Same exact thing. You know, there's other great songs too, like Tomorrow, Hallucinate, and Bad Actress. It's just, I don't know, man. I just, I just don't hear a lot of filler on this album, and as opposed to like some all the albums before this, where I'm just like, these are totally forgettable. And you know, don't get me wrong, like Love, Cruise Control, you know, like Come Undone. I don't remember those songs, but like the songs I mentioned, I just think there's just more good songs on this album that I think that are on Adrenalize. So, um, yeah, harpoon of me if you want, but uh, that's how it be. All right, going all the way back, we have On Through the Night, their debut album. Which I think is criminally underrated. Like, this was obviously before any of their big hits. Um, but what you have is just a collection of just really solid songs. I would compare it to the first Rush album. You know, it's super overlooked, I think, minus Working Man. And not many people care too much for it. But seriously, man, I, I really think On Through the Night just has many, many great songs. Rock Brigade 
is a great intro. Uh, Hello America, solid song, everything. Sorrow is a woman. It could be you, could be me, could be anyone. Um, Satellite is kind of whatever, but like when the walls came tumbling down, it don't matter. Answer to the master. Like all these songs that I don't listen to very often, but when I like read, when I hear the titles, I can instantly, I can instantly hear all these courses in my head. And I think that's what, that's like what makes a really good album. Even despite the fact that you don't listen to every song, you can still remember damn near all of them. And Rocks Off, uh, Rocks Off is really great and Wasted, favorite song on this album. Um, just super solid riffs. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> It's a really good album. What can I say? Like, Overture, surprisingly, I don't care for, like, at all. Um, and it's almost eight minutes long. I mean, I usually really like long songs, but that one just really does nothing for me. But yeah, Overture and Satellite are the only two songs that I could live without. Um, and not to mention the bonus stuff on this album has like uh, a song called I just looked at it and I already forgot what it was called um, Good Morning Freedom I'm not sure what's up with that but it's not on the actual CD and that one's just whatever and then it has like the Def Leppard EP on it which has uh, Ride Into The Sun which is another great version I just can't believe they never put they never officially had Ride Into The Sun on an official album because that's a really, really good song. But yeah, man, if you never gave this album a, sh a shot because it's like really early and there's no hits on it, I would strongly recommend you check this album out because it's like 90% great. All right, and on to one of the top selling albums in history. We have Hysteria, which spawned a total of six singles, which is half this album, which is bonkers. And yeah, all those singles are bangers. I mean, but to be honest, the title track Hysteria was never my favorite. But, you know, with Rocket, Animal, Love Bites, Pour Some Sugar On Me, Armageddon It, those five songs, I think, are just, you know, you know the songs. Everyone knows these songs. Um, but even the other songs like Women, Decently Rockin' Song, Gods of War I mentioned earlier. I think that's just a really good epic. Um, Don't Shoot Shotgun and Run Riot I think are kind of underrated. Not gonna lie. Uh, but you know like Excitable and Love and Affection are just kind of okay. And you know I, I, I just feel like I don't need to elaborate too f far into this because it's like you know this album. Yeah. everyone knows like all these songs pour some sugar on me is just like one of the most like popular songs ever written and it's like enough said and this is the first album of, of course when uh rick allen lost his arm so you know one-armed man playing on all these songs you would never even know i worked with a guy who um i was talking to about def leppard and i told him i was like hey do you know the drummer has one arm and the dude had no idea. Like you would never know if you weren't if you like weren't specifically told or like seen them live. But yeah, hysteria, you know it. But um, number three because I just think that the other two song, the other two albums, are just way more rocking. And if you know me, I love my rocking songs. But our runner-up is Pyromania. Now, this was, for a long time, my favorite album. But when it comes down to it, there's just one album that just edges, edges it out just a little bit. Um, and there was even a time I posted a really cringy photo like 10 years ago where I was like, if I had, if all I had was this... Master of Puppets and Moving Pictures by Rush. I'd be set if it was just those three albums. And that obviously is not the case anymore. 
but still, Power Mania, every single song, I would go out of my way to listen to every single song on this album, which admittedly, I can't say the same about my number one, but, you know, Rock Rock Till You Drop, it's just in the title, Rock It Till You Drop, just bang this album until you can't take it anymore. And then, you know, Photograph, everyone knows Photograph. Uh, Stage Fright, I think, is another one of those underrated gems. Too Late for Love, admittedly, I never, I don't go back to that often, but when I do, solid song, along with like Foolin', you know, that one too. Uh, Die Hard the Hunter is, a, a, you know, another one of those longer songs, which I think absolutely kicks ass. Rock of Ages, of course, with that cowbell. That's the reason I bought a cowbell for my set. This is the first song I played was Rock of Ages. And then um, Coming Under Fire, I swear to God, is probably their most underrated song. I love the chorus to that song so much. And I just think people, more people need to talk about Coming Under Fire. And then Action Not Words is another one of those really solid songs that just gets... No love, I think. And then Billy's Got a Gun closes it out. Just more solid ass shit. I don't know. Chances are you probably... <laughs> at this point in this ranking, everyone pretty much knows all these albums. So I just don't think there's any surprise at this point. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's the only album where I would go out of my way to listen to every song. But despite that... The songs I like on my number one pick are just out of this world. And it's time to talk about one of my favorite albums of all time. High and Dry. I, I started up here because, you know, it's high. God, I'm sorry. And you can even see this, uh, the swimmer guy on the cover of the latest album. He's, he's in, like in the middle underneath the uh, like one of the words. But you want to talk about an album that's just all bangers? All right, let's 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 just go through them all. Let It Go. I just, I just feel like I don't even need to go through all these songs. I'm just going to say the exact same thing about every single one of them. And it's just the guitar riffs and just the writing on this album. Damn near every single song. The only one, the only one that I'm iffy on is the last one. No, no, no. Like, I will never seek that song out, but when I listen to this album front to back, I can jam on it. But admittedly, yeah, it's not my favorite but every single other song on this album is pretty much a masterpiece. Especially with like Sw Switch 625, which I feel like is their only instrumental. If there is another one, I'm just not remembering it. There's just not a lot if there is. Um, Mirror Mirror, Look Into My Eyes just has a fantastic chorus along with uh, Lady Strange. And another hit and run. Bringing on the heartbreak was obviously their first single, and still one of my favorites. Just that main riff, forgive me, I can't play it that well, but Gypsy sitting looking pretty. Yeah, dude, it's just. Like I said, man, I, I could dissect every single song, but, yo, it's like 9 o'clock. I'm getting tired. I need to wrap this video up because it's going to be long. Easily in my top 10 albums of all time. I would recommend this to anybody. Even if you're not into Def Leppard and you think they're all cheese, you listen to High and Dry and you will hear, I think, why so many people fell in love with this band. And, you know... Judging what they are now aside, at the time, it was they were absolutely at the top of the game 
with all these albums. You know, High and Dry, Pyromania, and, and Hysteria, all three of them back to back. Great albums. But yeah, High and Dry is just the superior one, in my opinion. But yeah, be sure to let me know what you think. Um. I'm not going to be surprised if I see everything beyond 1990 on the on the bottom. But if some of you have some of those albums in your top five, be sure to let me know. Because like I said, a lot of them have some really good songs. It's just not from front to back. <laughs> like these like all these like top four were like there's maybe one or two songs that i'm iffy on and then everything else just kicks ass um but yeah let me know what you think and i think i'm gonna hit you guys with another surprise attack with the next ranking because it's gonna be very very different from def leppard oh my goodness on the total opposite opposite of the spectrum and I'm very excited for that one, but also kind of terrified because the fan base can be scary. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, take care, everyone. <laughs>